Hello and welcome to more War of the Spark Draft. Ooh. Ooh. I say that every time, but this time we got Teferi Time Reveler. So this stops your opponents from casting spells at any time besides on their turn as a sorcery. And his plus one lets you cast sorceries at instant. And if that wasn't good enough, he can also bounce stuff and draw cards. So basically does everything you would want. Um, a lot better in standard than it, than it is in limited, but you can do pretty sweet stuff like Toll in the Invasion on their draw step, or like aid the fall and end of turn. Like there's a lot of sweet plays you can make with this card. Really excited to play with it. The next best card might be Mawu or a Paradise Druid, but the rest of the pack actually gets a lot worse after that. Hmm. Followed up with a Rails Outburst. This card's amazing. Kind of on color with Teferi and goes really well with the uh the spells deck, which I seem to like. I like up Nixilis, Guild Globe is great. And then the rest is not that amazing, but Rez Outburst is one of the better uncommons in the format, I think. Killing a creature and then looking at the top three and getting the best, or top two, getting the best card, just awesome. What are we doing after this? Um, hmm. I think probably Dispark is the best card in the pack. It just exiles anything. There's also Wanderer Strike, good with Teferi. Um, you can uptick Teferi and cast this as an instant, and then it proliferates him. So not bad. I love Mana Geode. Don't go to weird's good, but I'm probably going to wheel it. Not a huge fan of Pride Mate. I just feel like white's not that good. And this card goes late. And beating down is not really what you want to be doing in this format. Um, I think I'm going to take Mana Geode. Just prioritize having good mana. Despark is great, but I don't have black mana yet. And I would rather have good mana for, you know, if we open a Busted Rare in the next pack or something like that. Then take this and then not have good mana for future cards. Following that up. We got, ooh, Aven Eternal, Bonds of Insight, Instant, and or Sorcery cards. XL Bonds of Insight. So this card's pretty sick. I mean, we could make like a really busted spells deck if we take Bonds. Bonds plus Teferi is nice. Yeah, uh, this card also wheels because it, now nah, I'm going to take it. <laughs> I want to make a busted spells deck. Wow, okay. Law Rune Enforcer, probably the best white common. Um, Nahiri is also real good. Kills creatures. These are creatures first strike for whatever that's worth, and that's about it. We could also take Wanderer Strike, but I feel like one of them might wheel because there's two good white cards in this pack. So I'm gonna take Nahiri and try and wheel one of those Wanderer Strikes. Now we can take a Gateway Plaza. I think Sunblade Angel is fine, but there's a lot of removal that kills it. I mean, even a Snare Spinner just blocks it. And this really helps our mana out. Now we can take the Spellkeeper Weird, which is really good if we're playing like a Spells Matter deck. like. Spellkeeper Weird getting back Rails Outburst. Pretty good play. Hmm. This is the first bad pack I think we've had. Um, I don't want any of these. Grim Initiate might be a good early play just to keep stuff alive. Like, I feel like this card's pretty bad at four mana. I don't like Bond of Revival. I'll take the Grim Initiate. It, you know, you don't have very many good one drops. This blocks for a while. If for some reason we need to play one drops and survive, this does the job. Okay, we got Defiant Strike. It's a good trick, Cycles. Um, Aid the Fallen is a good way to get back Planeswalkers. So like if your Nahiri or Teferi dies, grab it. Not a huge fan of Catharsis. And I think Dambreaker and Manticore, you can kind of always find one of these. So I'm going to take the Aid the Fallen, even though, you know, we're not certain to even play it. But it is a, probably the best card in the pack. Pull it up with a Guild Globe. So we want to see some type of Wanderer Strike wheel. Uh, this is interesting. So we have Bulwark Giant versus Totally Lost. Totally Lost is a good spell. It costs five, but Bulwark Giant just wins games. I'm going to take this spell, I guess. Follow it up with a Heartwarming Redemption and a two drop. Again, not sold on this. Ooh, Emergent Zone. <laughs> you can flash in a Teferi and use that to flash in spells or something. Ooh, okay. Now we got some stuff. I think Mizium Tank is actually just pretty bad. It's kind of just worse than Spellgorge or Weird because you play this turn three. If you play a non-creature spell, it attacks as a 4 power, but like that's really as big as it's going to get. Whereas Spellgorge or Weird, you play in turn 3, and then you can play a bunch of spells and make it just huge. Our deck really loves Augur of Bolas. We got a lot of spells, a lot of hits, and there's a lot of ways to like blink this and do crazy stuff with it. So I'm going to take that, and maybe we can wheel it to Fairy's Time Twist, which would be kind of fun in this deck too. Ooh, wow. Okay, there's a lot in this pack. Soul Diviner. Let's see, how many... I think this card is insanely powerful with like a mass and stuff. Right now we can take counters off to Fairy. 
Rail Helper, so we don't even need mass counters. Teo the Shield Mage just keeps us alive literally forever. And that's kind of funny, we can just sit behind like all the walls and just cast spells at our opponent. And Eternal Skylord is also great. I like a lot of these other cards like Contentious Plan and stuff, but I, I'm trying to wheel those. It's between these three. Uh, hmm. This is definitely the best. This card might wheel, so I think it's between these two. 5 mana 3 3 that makes a 2 2 flyer, or a 2 mana 2 3 that can draw a ton of cards. I think the power level on this is just higher. So even though it's a splash color, I'm really down for that. Ooh, Finale of Devastation. How do I pass this? Search for a creature with CMC X or less and put in the battlefield. If you cast it for 10, creatures gain haste. So right now we have four creatures, that being Soul Diviner, probably not playing this. Spellkeeper weird. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, okay. That's something. So I, probably the reasonable pick is just taking Tamio's Epiphany. It keeps us alive. Keeps the cards flowing. Do I really want to put a double green mythic rare? It basically wins the game if you can cast it. We have to cast it for 12 mana. I honestly think I'm going to pass this card. I know I'm crazy and I like to do things, but this just does not meld any which way with what we're trying to do in this deck. And I just don't think works. Ooh. Callous Dismissal might be the perfect card. Or Tybalt. Maybe Tybalt's just better. Yeah, I think Tybalt's actually just better. I love this card. I want it in the deck. It's tempo, it's a spell, it puts a creature into play with counters to sack for Soul Diviner. But Tybalt just makes stuff that blocks everything, so we're going to take that. Trying to stay out of green, keep our mana a little reasonable here, so we're going to take this. Hope to wheel or pick up at least one of those Callous Dismissals, though I think that card's excellent. Hmm. Spark Harvest, Gleaming Overseer, and Mana Geode. All good cards. I would like to keep my Black Smash... Black Smash? <laughs> Black Splash to a minimum, but I do think this card is really nice. I might have to pick up another Mana Geode here. We do have a lot of 4 drops, and our deck is pretty mana hungry, so just like turn 3 Mana Geode is not a bad play. I like Spark Harvest, but again, we need better mana right now, we're just going to play the Soul Diviner. So we're going to take a few more of these, so our mana can more consistently cast Black Spells. Hmm... Okay, so Interplanar Beacon helps with our mana, kind of. We can use it to cast Teferi, Tybalt, Nahiri. And the only other card I would probably be considering here is like a Tithe Bear Giant, which I think is a pretty solid card. But this lets us like pick up other Planeswalkers and maybe make some splashes. Ooh, Pyro Helix is good. Contentious Plane is also really nice. We need a few things to be able to proliferate though. Like right now we just have our Planeswalkers. I'm gonna take the Pyro Helix first. Get some two-man interaction. There's Teo. Hey yo. There's Teo. Uh, Bolt Bend is cool, but pretty expensive for this deck. We might even be able to get two Teo. I don't remember um, what pack it was in. So we can take a Dam Breaker or another Totally Lost. Five Man is kind of a lot. Like, a, kind of a lot, a lot. I could take Forced Landing for the sideboard, maybe? Maybe I do that. Take another Spellkeeper weird. All right, we're playing basically Oops All Spells. Doesn't matter. Double Spellkeeper is nice though. Getting back, like, does this exile itself? Darn. Yeah, I, I like the Spellkeeper Aid the Fallen combo. Not sold on this yet. Ooh. This card actually is going to be kind of nice in the deck. I might actually play it. Two mana 1 2 flyer that can become like a 3 2 easily is not bad. Okay, we picked up one of Time Twist. That can reset some of our Planeswalkers. Yeah, sure. And Island. Okay. So, what do we want? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I was going to discuss what we wanted, but they could just jump us into the pack. So, Kranko's pretty good. It attacks for a lot. And, let's see, I don't really know if I want to go into green. That's kind of suspect. If we, if we stay, we're basically just guys splashing black. I'm not going to play this either. Or two amazing cards. And, you know, we might not even play this. But I think with double Spellkeeper, we want the aid to fall in. Hmm. So, let's rule out cards we don't want. I don't think Samut is actually that good in this particular deck because we don't, you know, we're not attacking that hard. Trying to stay out of green, so probably not playing Leyline Prowler. Evolution Sage really is that good, but we could just take Kranko. Yeah, I think this fits better with the deck, and we can clear the way by, like, killing all their creatures. Yeah, we're gonna take a Kranko. Ooh, I do love me some Elite Guard Mage. That's a great card. I would love a Divine Arrow, and again, a Contentious Plan, but this card's nice. The life gain is actually really helpful too. Ugh. 
Another evolution sage? What are you doing to me, deck? I think for this deck, I kind of just want to take a wanderer strike. Flying first strike, vigilance, lifelink. Eh, I don't really need that. We could just win off of like, I don't know, somehow our planeswalkers. And casting this with instant speed off to fairy is kind of sweet, so. Wow. Okay, Merfolk Skydiver is a reason to go into green. I mean, I don't think this deck needs Firemind Vessel, and I probably don't really need a Bulwark Giant. I'm just going to take this on the off chance that we play it. Wow. Okay, th this pack's really paying us off. The Wanderer is a great pickup. Passing, not too much. Trusted Pegasus is good if you're beating down, but we're not beating down. We're just staying alive forever. And follow that up with... Ugin's Conjurant. This card attacks for a lot, but so I misread this. I think I said this last time, but when it's dealt damage, it removed that many counters. So, you know, playing this as a 7 mana 7 7 is good, but there are better things. Honestly, I almost just want to take this giant, but I think it might wheel. So I'm going to take this. I don't know if I'm going to play it. I'd probably rather have a Bulwark Giant in our deck, but we should get one on the wheel anyway. Uh, ooh, Spellgorger Weird is nice in this deck. I could probably replace one of the spell keeper weirds, maybe. Maybe I just play all of them. They're one fours, they block everything, and like getting back one of these seems kind of sick. Can we lock our opponent? Uh we don't have a planeswalker that returns stuff. No, I don't think we can. Ooh. Contentious plan kind of fits what we want to be doing here. Again, love bulwark giant, but there we go. Wow, Samut wield? Wait. Now I gotta rethink things. Basically, Samut giving creatures haste is good with Spellkeepers, Cranko, uh, Skull Diviner. But I th the real question is, is Bulwark Giant... No, nah, I'm, I'm just going to make sure I have this in my deck. Okay, I think I want Divine Arrow over Contentious Plan. Gives us better 2-mana interaction. And makes red basically just a splash color. Probably not playing this. I like this just a lot better. The gain 5 is ridiculous. So now we need cards to cut. We could honestly just take out black... That makes our mana so much better, but I really at least aid the Fallen with Spellkeeper weird. Like, this gets back a creature and a Planeswalker. So we can get back, I don't know, Tybalt. And then we Spellkeeper weird sack it. Maybe I bring it in in, like, dirtily matchups. Because now we can kind of do this. 26, that's 14 lands, so I need to cut one more. I'm not doing any of this. Sure. 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 Uh, what's the last card that I cut? Could even cut the last mana geode. I actually don't think I want Interplanar Beacon because we don't have that many Planeswalker spells and this card taps for colorless for everything else that's not that great. Uh, Fury, Outburst, Guard Mage, Epiphany. Like all these cards are awesome. Maybe I cut this in the main and just side it in because the rest of the deck does so much good stuff. I could see that. I'm pretty sad about it. But we're, we're three colors with three sources of mana of any color. And we're basically red-blue with a one, two, three, four, five, six. Not that light of a white splash. Maybe we're blue-white with a red splash. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I, oh, wait. This card's terrible. I'm cutting that. Bring this back in. That seems better. What does the mana base look like? Five, six, five. I've seen better mana bases, that's for sure. 17 lands, so we have 5, 6, 7, 8 white sources. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 red sources, and then 9 blue. So we have 8, 8, 9. Honestly, that's not terrible. Uh, Maybe this needs to be replaced by something. I really do want to play these cards, but I, I just don't think this deck has the mana to support it, unfortunately. Is I don't want too many mana geodes in my deck. I'd rather just have spells. I could cut the Strix for another Spellkeeper weird. And then just play like Sarkin's Catharsis to the face. Mm, nah, I'm going to keep this in. Most of our deck is non-creature spells, so this is just going to hit for a lot. See you guys round one. Right, here for round one. This deck actually kind of wants to play first. We have quite a bit of mana, but a lot of card draw. This is not a hand we can keep. We're doing 17 lands. Uh, this hand's fine. We'd like to see some lands on top, though, because we kind of want to get into the four and five mana territory here. Island, I kind of have to keep that on top, I think. It would be much happier with a mountain, but I just can't bottom an island with all these spells in hand. And besides, we got Sky Theater Strix to do the dirty work. 
This card's good for basically like poking damage at opposing planeswalkers and stuff like that. But I doubt we're actually going to do enough damage to kill someone. You never know. Uh-oh. Mountain? Hey, okay, now our, deck's, now our hand's perfect. Uh, Sure, we'll do that. I'll attack. So next turn we can Rails Outburst the Pride Mate probably. I imagine my opponent's playing that because they have life gain. So as long as they can't proliferate. Okay, take two. Means no counters going on it just yet. No! <laughs> Alright, never mind. It's poor power. We're dead. It's fine. We can uh, Rails Outburst into a land for Wanderer Strike. That's disgusting though. Hit for two. Hit for one. We're taking a lot of damage. Battlefield promotion, huh? Hopefully they play something we can kill with this, because I don't want to just point this at their face. That seems real bad. Ugh. No! We're just gonna die! <laughs> it's fine. We can get this back with Bond, so we're really likely to land in the top three cards of our library. Two bottom, two top. I, I feel like that's the most common sequence that I see, is two bottom, two top. When opponents cast, when I cast, it's always four bottom. Just kidding. But actually, though, no attacks. I love it. We bought ourselves some time. That means they have life gain in hand, so this needs to go down pretty soon. So, three to your face, draw a card. Yeah, we'll just take the mountain. I don't really need the mana geode. Ooh, that's good. Okay, so exile you. And Bonds of Insight getting back those two is going to be pretty sweet. Nothing to proliferate, but we can hit them for two. That's nothing to scoff at, and. We can proliferate most planeswalkers we draw. What's going to be sweet is if we draw Teferi, we can like uptick Teferi and then Contentious Plan on their end step. Doesn't really help anything, but feels good. Sahili's Silver. Sure. Please be Teferi. Teo. I think I don't really want to cast Teo. I feel like just casting Bonds of Insight is pretty sick, getting these back. But that also is a pretty, it's pretty inefficient with our mana. Right now we can just play Teo. Give ourselves hexproof, make a wall, and then proliferate. Now yeah, we're gonna be proactive. I think I'm just going to cast Bond of Insight here and just get back to amazing spells. Because then we can Rails Alper the Silver Wing. Because they're blue white, I don't think the hexproof matters. They don't have a creature that the O3 blocks. So we're just gonna get the two good spells here. We lost a fairy! No! <laughs> Was that literally. Wait, what? Wait, we milled? No! <laughs> That's really bad. Uh, We're going to have a hard time winning this game. We milled our three best cards. Brutal. This is why I really wanted Aid the Fallen in the deck. All right, Tao. You got to pull over time because all your friends are gone. Makeshift Battalion. Sure. Also fine. Square to the top. Don't do that. So I feel like I just uh, Wanderer Strike. Or Rails Outburst the Silverwing. Oh, Wall Rune and Forcer. Hmm. I guess it depends if they attack or not, what I do. Okay, they want to race. We can win races easily. So we probably just kill the Enforcer here. <laughs> or Rails Outburst that down. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, This is brutal because the land lets us start like double spelling and stuff. And I guess we can get it back with Spellkeeper weird. That hurts, but we're, we're milling Tamiyo's Epiphany and just hitting for two. I can't... <laughs> we're just going to hit a string of lands now because we've hit six lands in the top 20. Oh, that means there's, there's 11 lands left in the next 20 cards. There's only nine spells left in our deck. We're going to have a hard time winning. That's for certain. Oh, okay. So they give the Silverwing Vigilance? Now I'm just confused. Vigilance, Lifelink, are indestructible. They didn't want to do any of those? Odd. Yeah, I feel like definitely want to give Vigilance pre-combat, but it is what it is. See? See, we could have had an Epiphany in hand. Um, only exiles creatures, so I feel like we're just going to attack Gideon for one. This is kind of problematic here, but... And then we're going to play Bulwark Giant. Get our life total nice and high. This blocks a lot of stuff they have. That, three, four, five, six, play the Giant. Look at this big boy. He's doing all the stuff. War Screecher. So they can swing out. That's probably their best option. That makes this into a 4-3, but then we just block there and take six. So maybe that's not actually that good. 
That's a foil Gideon, I just realized. That is incredible. Ah, they give indestructible. That's a good... This card's insane. How do you beat this card in limited? If we just had Teferi, we could wander a strike down the Gideon on their turn. And that would be kind of nice. Yep. That's a 4-3 indestructible, so it doesn't really matter. We just block here. Take 6 damage. Divine Arrow, you really have it. Oh, take 8 damage. Okay. That's going to be tough to beat. Thanks, Bulwark Giant. Okay, Spellgorger Weird's pretty big. I don't know how we're beating this, to be honest. We gotta, like, hmm. Starts with Spellgorger Weird, I think. And then Teo makes a Chump Blocker. And then we can Wander a Strike next turn and make Spellgorger Weird huge. Like a wall. Pass turn. Yeah, I guess. I mean, they have no cards in hand, and Gideon doesn't ultimate till next turn. And if they ultimate him next turn, then they lose him. So they, we basically have two turns before it's like really bad for us that Gideon stays around. I think we can hit him for damage before that happens. Okay, I'm guessing they're giving Indestructible again. Vigilance could also make sense though. We're just going to assume they top deck nothing because we can't beat really any spells. Ay ay ay. Maybe they attack Teo. Nope. Me, me, me. Keeping back Wars creature. Yep. The 5 4. So we. This has indestructible and he is indestructible. I feel like we just do this. We take two. Um, if we're doing that, I'd rather block like this. The less power. And I don't really see the need to chump block there. Just really need no spells for the opponent. Because this is kind of a ambitious attack if they have no spells. I guess they can activate Wars creature, hit us for three, and we're dead next turn. Uh oh, they definitely have spells. Uh, no, because then, yeah, if they activate this, then Gideon dies. Huh. I guess I'll take it. So, Teo makes a thing. Let's contentious plan to figure out what else we're drawing. Trigger all of these. Boy becomes a 5-5. Five, five. This becomes bigger. Okay, planes. Let's go island. Wanderer strike. Exile the 5-4. The problem is we're going to have a lot of trouble dealing with flyers after this. And we, we can just chump block this. Like, it's not the end of the world. In fact, we could just exile the war screecher. They have one card in hand. And we attack Gideon with... What could their one card be? If they had Divine Arrow, they would have killed the Bulwark Giant. So it's not Divine Arrow. I think I'm just going to kill this war screecher. That attack seems weird to me. What? <laughs> Did I have lethal? What is... This is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, I just had lethal to their face. You know... I probably would have killed Gideon there. This is why you never scoop, because I had lethal damage, right? So this gives two counters because we proliferate seven. This goes up to three, so that's 13 damage. I probably would have killed Gideon. I'm just being honest. So, uh, force landing seems good, but not amazing. In fact, probably just any card would do fine in that spot. I'm just going to run it back. We got we got Teferi and his twist. We gotta keep. And we just gotta hope to draw lands off this guild globe. Ooh. Okay. No two drop from the opponent means we're kind of in business. Yeah? Well, we need to hit a land, but we're pretty likely to do that, I hope. Uh, I'm actually gonna play this globe. I don't think getting in for damage matters. What matters is playing Teferi. Okay. Turn three. Really gotta. Really got to do it for us, guys. Because if they play Creature, we bounce it. And then we get a whole nother turn. Then we get to Time Twist to Fairy when they attack it. Like, that's such a great sequence for us. We just need to land. Okay. Whew. Whew. Right, return up to one target Creature. Draw. That's so gross. Yeah, this card's kind of the nuts. Draw a mountain. Okay. Next turn, we can actually go... Oh, yeah, they can't even attack it next turn. Yeah, this is not fair. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, let's go Mountain, uh, Uptick to Fairy. And they can't play spells at instant, which gets a lot of people, I would imagine. Kind of want to just play Mana Geode into Time Twist. That seems pretty spicy to me. Don't need more lands. Yeah, just exile him, bring him back. Start him at four loyalty. Instant Speed Wanderer Strike. Respect our opponent for going for it. Target you. And we know for a fact they can't have any responses. They have no plays. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, they're kind of just dead, right? We just bounce this. Draw more cards. Play an island. Play a bulwark giant. 
<laughs> yeah, this is uh this is not even fair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm uh I'm cool with that. Iron bully. Sure. We got a lot of answers to this. The fact that Teferi's down tick draws a card is just ridiculous. So uh kinda wanna just have all our mana open because Sky Theater Strix still lets us hold up strike <clears throat> contentious plan and or divine hero whereas playing gateway plaza just lets us hold up one of those because we'd be down two mana lux channeler sure remember they can't play combat tricks during combat so once they attack everything we do is going to resolve and i don't think they realize that maybe they do they do okay i think i'm just going to contentious plan here make teferi a bigger boy Ooh, like me a spellkeeper weird. Ooh, I like Bond of Insight. I like all these cards. So we're gonna uptick to fairy. Uh one, two, three. So we can play Spellkeeper Weird, still holding up Bond of Insight. Yeah. And we cannot play Gateway Plaza and make that happen, so. Uh no need to attack. And now if they play Gideon, we can just exile it. So that's not even well, as long as we can keep this alive. Eternal Skylord, sure. Sweet. So playing this at instant speed just feels like the dirtiest thing. Yep. Ooh, Chandra's Pyrohelix kills a thing. I'm down for Pyrohelix and Time Time Twist just makes it impossible for them to kill Teferi, so let's do that. Maybe the Epiphany. So this is going to kill their zombie army, I believe. Yeah, I kinda like down ticking right now. That's a good one. One, two, three, four. Or the guard mage and if we draw an untapped land we're gonna play it otherwise we're just gonna play gateway plaza okay do that and no real reason to attack or do anything so we'll just pass turn if they attack to fairy we just time twist it so <laughs> like they can't <laughs> this is so mean okay i kind of want to put a stop at end of combat because if they don't attack i want to well okay um what are they attacking why can't i see what anything is attacking game log i don't actually know what they're attacking but i'm gonna let this resolve because we can use divine arrow and stuff everything at teferi you say well i think we're just gonna make profitable blocks block here this has menace so we just double block it okay not bad and then i'm going to time twist this teferi here they lose all their creatures end of combat i kind of want to pyro helix this Oh, they can cast tricks now. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Because Teferi is gone, yeah. But I, they're not proliferating anything, so it doesn't matter. Rally of Wings. Okay. I don't, I don't know what that card does, but that's fine. I feel like they're just dead. Like, very dead. <laughs> just playing around here. And when Teferi comes back, now we're going to kill this 2 2. Just use our mana. Yep. We'll take Teferi. I feel like I just attack with everything, except for the Spellkeeper weird. <clears throat> we can play Epiphany at instant speed. I don't even need to play this Gateway Plaza. This is just a thing of beauty right now. Play a Mountain, go ahead. Oh, we lost Krenko, I just noticed. Chase his Triumph. Sure. Johnny's Pride Mate. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. So if they cast all their cards, I think I want to just get, get back totally lost and make them redraw the Pouncing Links. Mm-hmm. No attacks. Sure. Okay. One, two, three, four. Tamio's Epiphany. Put that on bottom. Put the rest on top. All of them. And then, kind of like just casting Rouse Outburst here. Grabbing. It doesn't really matter. Nahiri, I guess. Um, don't have any sorceries to cast, so let's just bounce the Pride Mate. Let's go to combat. I guess I should have played Tybalt pre combat, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, Tybalt stops a Johnny's Pride Mate from triggering. And I'm actually just going to stop there to play around, um, what's that spell? The spell that each player chooses a permanent and gets rid of the rest. Oh, I didn't even activate Tybalt, whatever. None of this matters. You like, that seems good, but it's really not because we can just exile it. Yeah, we should have a 1-1, one -one, but I don't. I ain't scared. Life link. See, that's not going to work out how you want it to. Oh no, opponent. Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> and 
I'm fine just waiting to get Rails Outburst back. I think we can just kill them. Spell the Flash. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we can actually just uh, do this. So we can at least force the Chompskis. Wait, Nahiri. We win the match. All right, see you guys round two. All right, we are on the draw, and this hand's great. Put it mulliganed. I like it. Let's see how they scry. One card on bottom. Nice. Uh, against. I guess I'm gonna see what they play turn two. Blue red burning prophet. I feel like we want to play auger here. Oh, nice. Wanderer strike versus epiphany. I think I just want epiphany. We have a lot of uh good cards coming. And this just means we are not going to run out of relevant threats in the late game. It's a motorcycle going on. Opponent moving to combat. No, it's an airplane. Uh, I'm actually just going to take it. Let's see, they could have, they would need two spells to kill me. I'm going to buy. I don't know what, to, oh, we got to get rid of this end combat stuff here. Even eternal. It makes tail a little bit worse. Because we play tail, we down tick, we get a chump blocker. And I still kind of like it. Make an upgrade. Go ahead. Because then next turn we can kill even eternal with Nahiri. And we still have uh, tail back up. And the zombie army can't easily attack because Augur fullness blocks it. So we just take two. Yep, attacking Teo. Sure. And yeah, I don't mind that. That's it. Sweet. So let's play Nahiri, shall we? I don't know of any, yeah, there we go. X damage, X equals two. Sweet, okay. So now they're kind of in a world of hurt because in order to get any damage through, they're going to have to sacrifice the zombie army. Oh, I forgot to, thank you El Pollo Diablo for following, even though this is a recording. <laughs> I always forget to turn that off. For some reason, it's still linked to Twitch, even when I'm recording. Weird things, man. Maybe I should leave that on, that's kind of fun. Oh. That's pretty good, actually. How did they scry? Bottom. Well, Nahiri was a three for one. Uh, two for one, because it killed half a card, yeah. And Kals dismissal the wall. Fair enough. Connect me with both. Okay, block here, take three. One has no cards in hand, and they scry to the bottom, though. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with Spellgorger Weird into the Strix. And then next turn, we can play Mana Geode into the Epiphany. And opponent's just top decking, so... If this gets above 4 toughness, then it's almost impossible for Red-Blue to kill. They could have another Callus Dismissal to bounce it, but then we could just keep growing it. Nice. Uh, I don't even really feel the need to crank I'm just going to Mana Geode. And then draw some cards. Time Twist is actually kind of nice, I'll draw that. Bottom... Bottom. I think I can do better than Pyro Helix. Let's let's put all these on bottom, and I'll put that on top. Oh, the full combo. Um, I'll attack for three. I don't really mind them killing Tail. Yeah, I think we're going to to Fairy down tick and then time twist. Play to Fairy. Get your uh, non-creature spells out now. Oh, it just resolves. Kill your looter or your zombie. I guess we kill the zombie. Oh man. Swing for two. I'm gonna play Krenko too as a blocker. Now, if they try and kill Teferi, we can blink it. If they try and kill Krenko, we can blink it. This deck is really gross, man. Yeah, they're super dead. Ooh, Wanderer doesn't do a whole lot yet, but we can uptick this. Three, four. Kind of like playing the Wanderer. We don't have any targets, but it makes our weird bigger and it stops them from. Being able to burn anything, so like heart fire and stuff is not a viable top deck. And one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I just attack with this. It's so big. If they want to block with literally everything they can, but mm -hmm. <laughs> this is so mean. <laughs> I feel so dirty. Oh, the wanderer to fairy. What are these attacks? The wanderer, the wanderer, the wanderer. To fairy the wanderer. So how do I block this? They can't cast instance. So if I just cast bonds of insight, then to fairy is going to survive because this becomes a two three. I block here. Feels like they really want to kill the wanderer. Um, yeah. So I block here, and then I block 
here and here the wanderer takes two and goes down to three okay let's move to blocks so i can actually work this out so this is gonna block here this blocks here and this blocks here the wanderer only takes two damage they can't cast instance so this is just going to happen yeah and now we bond of insight trigger on the stack and they're actually just dead okay <laughs> uh they didn't even want to see my deck i'm fine with that uh we're just gonna run it deck's amazing Ah, what a beautiful, beautiful hand. Yes, I will keep. This This is what it's like to have good mana. It's it's a lovely thing. Oh, <laughs> I just feel so mean. Like, unless they play a turn two play, Teferi's just going to bounce a thing. And like, sure, you have a Goblin Assailant. That's cool. I got much scarier stuff coming down. Like, Spellkeeper weird. Yep. Even Eternal. Okay, this is a pretty good start. Let's go Island. And just play the Spellkeeper weird. I think Spellgorge are weird. Has a very high upside, but the risk is really high too. Like, if we play this, they just burn it like we did. Um, this also gets to block this turn. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that's a land. But I'm just going to Rails out first, I think. Take two. Yeah. So we want to play Island because that's the one they know about. And I don't see any issue with Rails Outburst like, on their turn unless they have Crush Descent. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to kill this 2-3 right now. Crush Descent would just destroy us. Ooh, I uh, don't want that, but I do want this. Go. So next turn, we have a couple options. We can just cast Elite Guard Mage. We can just cast Wanderer's Strike. What I think I like doing is playing Spellgorger Weird and getting back Rails Outburst. Maybe. Although, Guard Mage kind of blocked everything they have. Yeah, maybe we'll just play the Guard Mage. The Life Gain's kind of good, too. Okay, we're definitely playing the Guard Mage. Want <laughs> it with a board full of 2-2s. Two Block here. Go Planes. Or play you. That's pretty good. So, next turn we can go... Teferi doesn't do much. We can just pass and then activate and uh, activate Spell Keyboard and cast the Outburst. We can play Augur of Bolas. Oh, we're going to bounce it? I guess that's your best out. We take six, well then nine, four, play Elite Guard Mage again. They didn't have an answer last turn, they won't have one this turn. Go Island, cast Augur, because that blocks two. Spell? Sure. And if they make this any bigger, we can probably just use Teferi to bounce that. Yeah, that's getting bounced. I think we're just going to chump that with the Augur. Swinging out, wait, how does that work? What if I just do this? Take eight and fall to four. They have no cards in hand. <sighs> this seems pretty good. They have no cards in hand. Sarkin's Catharsis gets us, I guess. But why would they have that in their deck? This seems like a really good situation if we do this. So take eight. One, two, three. Cast Fairy. Bounce that. That's a lot of lands. Um, planes. Kind of want to just get down to Spellgorge or weird. We're at four life. Yeah. We need to start like doing something here. Just keeping back all of our ground blockers, who knows? Maybe they play a hasty guy. Sorry, there's garbage trucks by me. Even eternal. Wow, that is a lot of even eternals. <laughs> yep. That's a lot of islands. What is happening? Um, uptick to fairy. That just gives us a lot of options and past turn, I guess. Go. How many lands is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Phew. I guess we've drawn a lot of cards, never mind. I can't complain anymore. <laughs> I always forget how many cards this deck draws. Spellkeeper weird. Sure. We can get back Relentless Advance. I feel like opponent has to swing with both of these, but that's just kind of suicide. Yep, so block here. And then crack the weird. Getting back Rails Outburst. I feel like that's just Scoop City for opponent. I'll press this, one, two, three, four. Then we get to Contentious Plan or Spellgorger Weird. Ooh. Uh, totally lost. Can just time walk them, so I think I'm going to do that. Close combat, yeah. Because now, now we know what they're drawing. We can totally lost the Erratic Visionary. Proliferate, proliferate. Go Mountain. Put you on top. Uh, I guess if they're... No, looting a response doesn't do anything. Because now it's just time walk. And then we can uptick to fairy and have Wanderer's Strike. 
to do something. Are he gone? Sure. Maybe I should have put the Spellkeeper weird on top? Either one can't draw a card, so... And then we uptick to Fairy. Hold everything back for... Uh, do we even need to hold everything back? What happens if we attack like this? I think that's safe. <laughs> Considering we know exactly what they're drawing. We get to eat the zombie army, and then we get to Tamio's Epiphany end of turn. They're just going to play their looter. Maybe we should have... We're playing this a little conservatively because they could draw into burn, maybe. But hopefully this finds the Wanderer. Okay, there we go. Um, I literally want all of these. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So we can play both of those. So you're going on top, then you, then both of you. <laughs> it's got to be so bad to see your opponent put all of them on top. <laughs> yep, opponent can't, uh, can't cast any spells to disrupt this. So it's just going to happen. One, two, three, four. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's start with the Wanderer. So now no burn hits us. And then we play Bulwark Giant, and now our life total is high. We win the match. See you guys in the finals. We haven't lost a single game, I don't think. See you guys then. All right, we are in the finals, fighting for that solid 3-0-6-0, and this hand just needs a planes. Teferi has been significantly better than I ever dreamed he could have been, and I already thought he was really good, so pretty happy with this deck so far. And we have so many hits for Augur that I'm going to run that out turn two. Please don't whiff. Be, I hyped you up, Augur. I hyped you up, Augur, and this is how you repay me. Um, I guess we want Cranko on the bottom. But the, the upside is there were no planes in those cards, so we can still draw planes for Teferi. I really want to save Contentious Plan to draw planes, but that might be a little greedy. Totally lost. Yeah, I'm going to run it. No, with nothing to proliferate. And that is Contentious Plan at its worst. Shriek Diver. At least we can kill that. Divine Arrow. Yeah. Well, we're going to attack. We're going to hope they play an X1. That way we can hit a bunch of stuff with the Pyro Helix. But I think I'm actually going to take two off of this. Just, just because of the blow potential. If it was a burn spell that only did one damage to one thing, then I would just run it out. But as it currently stands, we're going to do this. Opponent not playing these spells. Planes. Okay. Hitting for one. This is... uh. This could be better. We have a lot of good draws, though. Tamiyo's Epiphany, Mana Geode, Rails Outburst, to name a few. And our opponent had no plays last turn, so I imagine this is either Discard or, like, Cruelty on Augur. Yeah. So, still drawn to planes. One card on top. I imagine that's a land. <sighs> okay. <laughs> that might be all the mountains in the deck. There might be one more. But totally lost is actually going to be kind of brutal. Turret Ogre. Because that was the best play this turn, and we know they're looking for lands. So this is actually just time walk. So Time walk it is. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> okay, I think that's all the mountains in the deck. That's unreal. So they play the giant. We can still draw planes and, like, <laughs> all these good things. Yep. All right. Fine, deck. If that's how you want to be, we'll just kill it in the Hiri. Hmm. It's a turret ogre bonanza. Okay, planes would still be awesome because we could kill one of these and then bounce the other one. Okay, one, two, three, four. This is brutal. <laughs> so brutal. Yep, I mean, this is the price you pay for uh... I mean, Nahiri is four mana, kill a four, three, gain four life. That's pretty good. And then we can spellkeeper weird next turn if we don't draw anything, but. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yep. I'm surprised this deck doesn't have any like Jaya's greetings or anything. I think people have finally realized that those cards are insane. Harold. Okay. Less worried about that. <sighs> Come on, deck. Why you, why you do me like this? Go ahead. I think we have the most blue sources. I think it was uh seven white sources. We're attacking with both. Well, I mean, I kind of have to block. If they want to, like, use a burn spell on Spellkeeper, that's okay with me. Otherwise, it's just a free attack anyway. Yep. All right, deck. It's still not too late. We got hope. One plane stabilizes the whole board. Six. Uh, let's see. We have a few options, actually. We can go... We have seven mana, so we can play... We can play the Wanderer. 
exile the ogre, and then they can hit us for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can play the wanderer and the strix, or we could just play bulwark giant. And that seems like the best play to me. Gaining 5 life, um, very few removal spells will actually kill this bad boy, or girl. And we can take some damage, but honestly, if they're like trading a kill spell, classic creature for this, that's pretty good for us. Um, the one thing I'm worried about is cruelty, Obnixilis' cruelty, but that actually, even the 1-1 one -one would trade with Bulwark Giant, because it would be an 0-1. <laughs> so we can't really play around that card. Moving to combat. Hopefully they don't attack. I don't like this. Uh, I actually kind of want that one alive. Seven. We take eight and fall to four with this block. But it plays around a three mana burn spell. And then next turn we could play the wanderer exile this. Okay. I'm okay with this block. Cruelty is going to win no matter what. But it's really hard for them to kill the bulwark giant with any card besides that. We're, we lose to Heartfire, I guess. Okay. Oh, <laughs> maybe that block was bad. I don't know. People seem to play Heartfire a lot. Anyway, running. What do we do here? Kind of like Spellkeeper weird against their deck, but also I kind of like just two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had eight white sources. Yeah, that was just bad luck. We'll, we'll be fine next game. Um, Against our opponent's deck, I feel like I still kind of want to be on the draw. But we could... Yeah, I want to be on the draw. Like, this hand on the draw is totally fine. This hand on the play is a little suspect. But we're going to hit lands, and then the wander is going to do some good stuff. Yep. Basically, if your deck has, like, a lot of early burn, you're playing, like, Divine Arrow, you might want to consider being on the draw, because the whole, like, point of your deck... Um, I'm going to play Augur, because it blocks. The whole point of your deck is to, like, one for one your opponent. Please don't whiff. There we go. Like this card. Divine Arrow. Great card. Next turn we play the Weird, most likely. Raging Crunch. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. What if we just play Krenko? Start doing that. This is actually kind of a good turning point because any kill spell that kills the Weird would also kill Krenko. This has such a high upside, I'm going to do it. If their plan is to just play like a, a random blocker or something, this gets in and then we can like Divine Arrow, whatever they block with, seems nice to me. There are a lot of things that like blow us out, but that would also kill this, so. Yeah, I don't love that. Planes is good. So, kind of like just getting the Wanderer down while their hand is still tied. So this. And our opponent has shown many four power creatures, so. Keeping back Augur to block. If they play in a mass two spell, then the Wanderer can exile it. And hopefully we hit a land and then we can play weird into spells, keep it alive longer. Bleeding Edge was... <laughs> Really good there. Nope. Don't mind that. So we're gonna go spell gorger weird, pyro helix, helix the herald, and then eat the zombie army. Pyro helix this, and then we have a three three spell gorger weird. Aha! Get out of here. We can start attacking. I don't see any reason not to. And they don't have burn, so the only card that can kill weird is now cruelty. Obnixilis's cruelty. No. Get out of here, Shriek Diver. It's fine. It would have killed the Wanderer anyway. Yeah. Are they going to Jai's greeting down the Spellgorger weird too? That would be a good sequence. It's alive. Okay, let's start with the Guild Globe. Is it big? Nice. Okay, they don't have the greeting. Wanderer Strike. So we're just going to play this. Have the blue tapped down. And hit our opponent for five. Sure. Turret Ogre. Doesn't do anything. I kind of like Time Twist on Augur, so let's swing with both. Okay. If that's happening, we're just going to let it happen. We have both Divine Arrow and Totally Lost, or whatever we want to do. If things get really bad, we can uh, Time Twist the Augur and block. Uh, no, we can't. Never mind. I will take two here. I'm going to Totally Lost the Turret Ogre. I guess Heartfire does get us pretty bad. Okay. I was going to say. Um... Yeah, let's just draw lands and spells and win the game. Hey, opponent put me on the play. They learned a thing. Um, See, this is a hand that would be awesome on the draw. I think I still keep this because it has all of the elements of an amazing hand. Like if we just draw two lands, Rael's Outburst is good. And Chandra's Pyro Helix can kill their first play. Then Bond of Inside can get back both of these. The Wanderer seems 
like an all-star against their deck, so we just needed to hit lands. Or Augur. Draw some spells. No! No! <laughs> Ugh. What are you doing, Augur? Putting lands on the bottom? You brutal, brutal man. Oh. I guess if we're going to make way for planes, I won't be upset. So now we just need to draw one more land in this hand. We'll probably just win. Opponent has not shown any black either. Jai is greeting Augur of Bolas. They must be really hurting for black mana. One card on bottom. Crotch. Sure. Alright, land. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's just get down the Wanderer that stops all burn stuff. I guess this plays right into Shriek Diver again, but it seems like they're missing lands. And if we can get this down now, they're probably not going to Shriek Diver us this turn. Oh, that's like the worst case scenario. Goodbye, the Wanderer. Okay, I feel bad now. It's cool though. They're going to play Shriek Diver this turn and then all will be forgiven. Because then we get to Pyro Helix both of them and that's going to be gross. Please, please play the Flyer. <gasps> oh! Oh, <laughs> all right, no longer mad. Look at this beauty. This is Scoop City right here. <gasps> I've never had some. That is seven mana, eight mana, because they activated it. Eight mana worth of creatures killed for two mana. <sighs> I think if we lose the game now, it's our own fault. So, kind of want to Rails out first, but this would be a good time to Bonds of Insight. The problem is if we don't have a spell in the top four. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Getting back like Rails Outburst with Bond of Inside is like the grossest thing. I mean, not as gross as what we just did to our opponent, but yeah. So I'm just going to burn this now. I don't really need the gateway, so I'll just take the island. You know, I think Bond would have whipped, so I'm pretty happy with our decision. One, two, three, four. Play Bond of Insight. Please don't mill our Chaperi. Rails Outburst and Chandra's Pyrohelix. We've milled to Kranko and lands. That's good. Go. Laza Tep Reaver. Yep. Go. Um, that's kind of a lot of lands, but I'm just going to take the hit for one. We have a lot of creatures that just straight up block all of that. They know we have these two, so they're going to try and bait us, but I'm fine taking two a turn until we draw into something better. Dusk Mantle Operative. Sure. Um, kind of want to Pyro Helix that, but we can just wait. That is a card. I'm going to keep this to play around discard, I think. Just past turn. Mary's Time Twist makes Teferi a pretty good top deck now. Or really any Planeswalker. We can like play it, activate it, blink it. Samut. That's a good card. So they'd probably target the zombie army. Interesting. I like that play by the opponent. So I'm going to kill the 2-2. Only take 2 damage. Still holding up Rails Outburst. Or something scarier. Guy Theater's Tricks. That'll do it. Threaten in Samut. Sorry, I gotta turn off my air conditioning. It's getting hot. Didn't want you guys to have to listen to that. Uh, yeah, we just passed turn. Now this blocks everything they have, so they kind of have to Samut target one of these. Plus two, plus one, and gains haste, scry one. So they get the scry no matter what. I think I'm just gonna let that happen. Let's see how they scryed. One card on bottom, okay. So if they're, whoa, attacking with the one, one haste. That seems wrong. What do they have that amasses? Also, sorry about the garbage truck. Chandra's Pyro Helix there. Um, this kind of seems like a good time for Teferi's Time Twist, but I want to make sure Rail's Outburst resolves first. So we're going to kill this. Three, four. Nice. Um, I like the Guard Mage. And I'm actually just going to let that, let that die because Samut's not that scary. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Because now we have Time Twist to protect the Guard Mage. And if they play anything really big and give it haste, we can Divine Arrow. Empire Opportunist. Okay. Ooh. One, two, three, four. Get a Guard Mage. Guild Globe. Okay. Um, We can play Teo and just hold up Time Twist. That actually seems okay to me. I want to uh, play our land here. Make a wall. Pass turn. So I'm hoping they like... Jaya's greeting our elite guard mage. Then we can time twist in response. They can't even attack with the opportunist. Let's see how they scryed. Bottom. Okay. Well, I think we just block here. That's fine with me. Okay. Let's uh let's attack Samut. This costs eight, so they're uh, only at six. So they're pretty far away from casting that. So if they want to actually get damage into Teo, 
Okay, let's play Managia, or Guild Globe, see if we draw anything good. A good one. Make a Defender, three, Managiode, Scry one, that on top for sure, and then play Spellkeeper Weird as a uh, pretty nice blocker. So opponent's drawing very thin. If they want to activate some mood, it dies. We have Divine Arrow plus Time Twist to keep everything alive. We're at a very hearty 18 life. Oh. Uh, so Massacre Girl gives everything minus one, minus one. Then this dies, and it's minus two, minus two. Then this dies, and it's minus three, minus three. Then all of these die. So I guess Teo's dying. That's a really good play from the opponent. I think I want to use Time Twist to save some of my action. Probably Spellkeeper weird. And I'll just take four. Yeah, because, yeah. Then this comes back at end of turn. Yeah. Okay. I guess we take six, but that's not so bad. They, they die, and then these two triggers kill these, and then these add more triggers, so yeah. Saving the 1-4 I think was the correct play. Divine Arrow is going to kill Massacre Girl. Hopefully they... Oh, they're smart and didn't use Samut. Taking me for four, sure. Hmm. Uh, kind of like just using... Yeah, we're just going to Divine Arrow the Massacre Girl, and we're going to attack Samut. That way they don't have any hasty creature nonsense. I think they know about Divine Arrow, but maybe not. This is going down. They had it. The Madman. Okay, I think I'm just going to Wander Strike that. <clears throat> All right, this has been a good game so far. Oh, that's one of the best possible draws. Yeah, Nahiri. And then kill this. And we have a 2-5 blocking their 3-2. Could exile it and then proliferate. I don't really see the need. I still have Spellkeeper weird up for like literally any of these spells. Probably Rails Outburst is the best one. <laughs> yeah, we'll save Wanderer Strike for something bigger. I guess we are going to deck. I need to think about this. How do we win before we deck? Making this into a 3-6 and just attacking? Hmm. No, we still have some of those, the, the uh, what are they called? You know what I'm talking about. The creature, Spellgorger weirds. Those can, those can win the game. There we go. One, two, three, four. Cast the Epiphany. So we're down to seven cards. Bottom, 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 top. And to three, four, five, six. Play Boar Giant. And I think I'm actually going to attack with a Spellkeeper weird. Maybe I should have not played Boar Giant first, but I, I don't know how their deck kills this. So the bottom cards of our library. Where's Teferi? I feel like the next draws are like Teferi into our two Spellgorger weirds, and then the three lands we put on the bottom. I think that's actually the sequence of draws we have, which is not so bad. Kind of want to save Tybalt until we have Spellgorger weird. Attacking her. All right, well, I block. Is this a Jaya's greeting? Ooh, okay. We got a 4-4. Yeah, we can still get... Their deck looks amazing. They have Massacre Girl and Widespread Brutality. What is going on over there? When did they discard Vraska? Oh, when we cast the other card. Aid the Fallen, getting back. Massacre Girl and Samut. Yeah. Fortunately, Massacre Girl doesn't do too much. Teferi here can kill the zombie army. Yeah. And then we're going to draw Spellgorger weird. Play the weird. Play Tybalt. Not activate Tybalt because we don't want to give them Spellgorger weird. Um, fodder and start attacking. If they have another Jaya's Greeting to kill Spellgorger Weird, then we're in trouble. But I think, given the current board state, we can kill them in the next five turns. Yep. And we just let Samut sit around. They can scry all they want. Show game log. One card on bottom. Yeah. Hasty Massacre Girl won't do it. We can uptick here. Hit our opponent five. And. Spells Outburst does 3 to any target, and this does not draw, so that can also get us, like, the last bit of damage. No need to activate Tybalt again, because it just makes it possible for Massacre Girl to kill us. And we know the last cards in our deck are all lands. Exactly what we wanted to see. Um, she gives minus 1, minus 1. That's fine. They actually cannot cast Instance, I just remembered. So if they uptick some mood on her, now we can just do this. And that should just be game. Yeah, because this goes up to four now. And I think they're trying to kill it, but they don't realize I have Teferi. 
The only reason I'm doing this now is because we have Teferi. Well, and that's the only reason I can cast this spell anyway. <laughs> you, 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 you. It's really close. Tybalt gives blockers, though. Wow. Okay. They're really trying to deck us. But now we have Tybalt, and that should be enough. Make a creature. Very uptick. Wait for three. Um, does me having hexproof matter? I think just having defenders is better to keep Tybalt alive. Sure. Alright, we got we got three turns to win this somehow. Oh, they don't have anything. Okay, now that's probably game. Uptick to fairy. And I guess we can to fairy bounce blockers if things get like really bad. Then for four. Make another Tybalt token. Play land. Go. And uh this is probably game. I'm trying to think of cards that get him out of this, and I'm drawing blanks. They would need, like, yes! Another 3 0 in the bag. That was an actually really good match. Opponent's deck was absurd, but so was ours. And I think this match kind of encapsulates why I like this format so much. It's like you have access to a lot of decisions, and so you can actually let your skill show through. You know, a lot of these games come down to what is our game plan? How are we going to win this game? And can you execute that? You know, saving the Tybalt tokens for after Massacre Girl so that our creatures don't die. Stuff like that I think is really important. Where was our other Spellborn? You're weird. I thought we had two. But maybe that was only post-sideboard. Yeah, that was probably post-sideboard. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully we can keep this 3-0 train running. See you guys next time.